good morning everyone. So this is Wilfred Lehano from Prospol Philippines. Um, we at Prospol Philippines help students and graduates connect with the top employers in the country by providing a careers directory platform made for students and graduates. Now, so first of all, I'd like to extend a big thank you to everyone present here. Um, we work together with the top employers and top universities in the country to bring you the second Career Jumpstart Sessions 2021. So this is a free event that we are organizing regularly to help students, graduates, and career shifters begin or advance your careers. So to keep yourself in the loop, make sure you sign up on Prospol Philippines. No? So I see that we already have a good number of participants here. If you can, please say hi on chat. Um, Maybe say your um, degree course, kung sang school kayo galing, if you're from Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao, just say hi. Um, ayan, kanina, dami ng mga na good morning sa atin. Ayan. Good morning, everyone. So, yeah, to everyone, welcome to our panel session for the engineering sector. No? For this session, um, we will be talking about the tips and tricks for you guys, the audience, to make it through in in the industry you know? so take out your pens before you miss anything so before our speaker introduction um i would like to ask everyone that if you have questions that you'd like to ask you can type it in the chat room or in the q a tab and we'll try to answer as many as possible after our speakers are done so just park your questions here you now and so girl, also um here's how our program would flow so we'll have a panel session for 40 minutes and then we'll also have a 10 minutes um, question and answer for all our panelists. And then after that, we will have our two friends from Aboitis Power and EEI to talk about how is it like working for their respective companies now. So after each talk, we'll then allot um, five minutes each for them to address your question. So please do maximize the opportunity no, to interact with our employers, with our partners here. Because I don't think this opportunity, um, you, you come across this a lot. No? So this is your opportunity to talk to them, ask your questions, ask, um, you know, kung ano yung mga makakatulong sa inyo in terms of, you know, improving your applications and asking about their application process. Um, so ganon. So... Our panelists here are some of the top professionals in the country, in the industry, and they are also from the top engineering companies in the country. So you will be getting a lot of information that you can use in your applications. No? So I will not keep you waiting, um, but I think to articulate it better, I can give the floor to our panelists to introduce themselves, maybe a short background from what company and what you're doing in your current role. No? So maybe we can start with Monique from Prime Asset Ventures. Hi, Monique. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. So I'm Monique Ramos. I'm the head of HR for Prime Asset Ventures, Inc. Um, Prime Asset Ventures is a holding company. We have several other brands under us. So we are really big in finding good engineering talents uh, in the market because we are an expanding business. We are conquering new heights and we would want to take the new generation with us. So in my role, what I do basically is I partner with the business to try and identify to meet and meet actually their human resources needs. So from the benefits administration to, um, of course, finding new talent. So that's just part of my role. And I could really attest to how the um, careers being taken care of here in Pabi. I've only been here for three years and I've already moved to several um, uh, what they call this roles within the organization in different companies as well. So I guess if you're that type of person who really wants that type of change and exploring new frontiers, then this is the company for you guys. All right. Thanks for that, Monique. Um, how about you, Doreen? Hi, everyone. Good morning. And I hope everyone's having a great day so far. So I'm Doreen Manalang. I'm a talent attraction specialist at the Boitees Power Corporation. And what I do, basically recruitment and employer brand and onboarding of uh, new talents. So in a Boitees Power Corporation, we're part of actually a, a larger group, which is a Boitees group of companies. And we are the leading power generation company in the Philippines. We're also the leading uh, producer of renewable energy and operator of renewable energy in the country. So as a whole, we're engaged in power generation, power distribution, 
distributed energy and retail electricity services. And we are currently growing to be able to attain our goal for the next 10 years of having a 50-50 balance between our renewable and our thermal portfolio and to be able to double up as well on our capacity um, in, our, in our power generation portfolio. So if this is something that's interesting to you, then we have a lot of opportunities for, for everyone, for uh, fresh graduates and professionals alike. So I'll talk more about that later. Well, so um, please do attend the career talk later. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Doreen. Uh, thank you for that. So how about you, Paula? Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me, by the way? Yep. Am I um, loud? Clear. And, uh, clear? Yep. Okay, that's good. Good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, to all of the participants who joined us this morning, my name is Paula Magtoto from JGC Philippines. Basically, I am a recruitment specialist here. Um, we actually handle a lot of um, accounts from the, from the uh, well, specifically me, from the engineering up to the back office um, positions, we identify or I, I specifically identify the needs of each department or each team here for our uh, manpower. Okay, what is J? What is JGC? Basically, JGC Philippines is the leading multinational EPC um, here in the Philippines. Well, actually, not just in the Philippines, but um, as I mentioned also earlier, this is a multinational company. Our head office is located in JGC, Yokohama, Japan. Specifically, it's called JGC Holdings. We also have other JGC offices across the globe. We have JGC Singapore, JGC Vietnam, and JGC USA, just to name a few. What else? Um, basically, most of, of our projects, or we are actually involved in the EPC and facility maintenance services of oil and gas refineries. Um, we also do petrochemical plants, energy and chemical related plants. In fact, we have some um, partners here in, in Prospel event right now. We are also um, in partner with Aboitis as well as EEI. Okay? So basically that's it. All right, thank you very much, Paula. So we really have a great set of panels here, no? So as you can see, maybe for some, um, baka sila pa nga yung finals interview sa inyo or initial interview. So for our audience here, please do maximize your chance no, to pick their brains for some useful insights. So ayan. Um, so I, I think to start off, I think this question is in everybody's mind right now, no? So what is your organization looking for in an applicant, basically? In a nutshell, what are you looking for in an applicant? So maybe we can start again with Mon. Um, well, for Lug, I guess it would depend on what the requirement is. Like there are opportunities within PAVI that are open to new graduates. And then there are those that would require a minimum of, let's say, one year experience. In general, what we look for in an applicant Aside from, of course, performing well during the recruitment process, we would really want people who are driven and ambitious because the, the business is growing, the business is thriving. So we are really investing, so to say, not only in terms of capital, but also in terms of time and effort to really reach our goals and um, achieve those numbers that we need. So that ambition and drive are very important to us because that would help us actually move forward with our um, objectives. So if you are that kind of applicant, I guess it's, you know, you might be thinking, paano kaya namin iaan yun? Paano namin siya hahanapin? How do we look for uh, those characteristics during the recruitment process? Well, we have our ways, of course. Uh, of course, we, uh, we do the um, interview and then at the same time we have um, aptitude tests that would also help us determine that. But at the end of the day, um, it's also a match between the company and the applicant. Of course, uh, we have uh, we have a very Filipino culture here, uh, and with that said, 
um, that orientation in terms of the values, in terms of the principles, is also something that we are looking for. Very simple lang naman. We want people, we trust our people, we hope for them to be honest in their day-to-day -day jobs. And we are actually a company that would really, or we are really looking for the hardworking type. Kasi talagang the, the drive of the business. Kasi Pavi is not yet that known. So we are still really um, establishing our roots. So it's really the groundwork that we are trying to do here. So we are looking for those individuals who not only possess the, the right skills, but also the right heart and mind to do the job. All right. Thank you for that, Mon. Um, how about you, Doreen? How about for Aboitis Power? For Aboitis Power, specifically for fresh graduates, um, of course, since uh, most of them don't have experience yet, we look at more on the, on, more on the soft skills, um, soft skills that they've gained uh, from extracurricular activities, their potential, their drive, their willingness to learn. Um, of course, culture fit, as Mon also mentioned, though we also look into that. Um, nowadays, we also look at resilience, uh, agility, um, and especially their attitude, and lastly, the value that they can bring to the organization. All right, very interesting. No? So, but yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just um, say my insights later. How about you, uh, Paola? Um, was it what's JGC looking for in an applicant? Okay, all right. So, well, let let, let me just also um, perhaps advertise on the side. Basically, um, right now, we are looking for an exactly 76 cadet engineers who will be joining us next year. Um, we do have two batches. We have the first batch. They will be hired by March 2022, and the second batch will be on July 2022. Specifically, we actually need candidates, of course, who have remarkable academic background. We also need... Um, applicants or candidates who will be able to pass our screening process here from the testing up to the panel interviews because the panel interview or the um, the interview here for the cadetship program will reach up to our executives and um, also we we are already looking for our future successors here in JGC so we really want candidates who will be um, yeah trustworthy who 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 actually values um what else who values integrity also and um who is open to a lot of challenges that uh JGC can definitely give to them okay so basically that's it ah, i see i see all right thanks paula so i think um well not surprising at all no kasi i've i've done this with previous um, career sessions na din. But I think yung lumalabas dito na talagang um, the companies are looking for is yung attitude and then drive. So those soft skills, um, yung grades, it seems na parang hindi siya actually nagmamatter a lot. Well, it does matter for um, certain positions, of course. But I think for some most of the positions, what's really important is yung attitude, no? You know, yung honesty, yung culture fit, um, yung drive, specifically yung drive and ambition. Um, I think some of the students here, some of the graduates here might be wondering there, they did not graduate top of class. Um, how will they enter into such companies such as JGC, Aboitis Power, Pavi, na talagang um, established na in the industry. No? So yeah, I, I think that's a very good in insight to take that um, attitude matters a lot drive and ambition matters a lot so i think that's one thing that you may want to highlight for our audience here you may want to highlight during your application process then no? um, it's not just about the grades um, but it's more on um, you know yung attitude talaga and i think yeah I, I presume you do receive a lot of applications from all over the country what do they, the students, need to show to progress to the next round? So, for example, they've submitted their application form. Um, they've already been scheduled for an initial interview. Ano ba yung kailangan ipakita nila during, you know, yung, yung levels of your recruitment process para makapag-proceed sila to, of course, um, finally, employment. Um, maybe this time we can start with Doreen. Well, for us, 
uh, basically the, the same question uh, the same answer um yeah. to, to the question no um uh, we really look at how they communicate how they're able to answer the behavioral questions that we put out in the interviews and of course uh, that willingness to not just to to learn and um to learn more about the organization but also the willingness to and and the interest that they have in avoid these power corporation and then what they're also um looking forward to um, as they start their career with avoid these power all right thanks doreen how about you paula okay basically with um jgc has a very achievable set of criteria at pre qualifying phase in in which applicants are are expected to to pass no um yeah and not to mention um aside from being diligent candidates also have to be persistent during this this uh, stage of of um of their qualification from testing up to the final interview because definitely you guys or the participants or the candidates will really go through some series of interviews here because as what I mentioned earlier, we are really looking for people or candidates who will become our future successors or leaders here in the organization. Not to mention, um, yeah, communication is also very important because here in JGC, we, we are sending out our candidates or our employees to represent JGC Philippines in other um, global offices. So yeah, Con um, persistent, diligent, and having a good communication skills. Um, those are our, uh, um, our key uh, for you to proceed or go to the, or to reach the final phase of the qualification. All right, thanks Paola. So I think tama no. Um yun yung parang isa sa mga ano ba, um overlook na trait yung persistence and yung patience talaga kasi I think some of our graduates here are of course very young. They want the results pag nag-apply sila, gusto nila makita kagad nila okay nakapasa ba ako o hindi. Move ba ako sa next round o hindi. Um what we need to realize is that you guys are receiving all hundreds or maybe or maybe thousands of applications no. So it takes time to process and especially if you're proceeding to the next level of course it also takes time to you know schedule um interviews with um you know yung mga managers mga directors natin so having the patience and having the persistence to you know follow up with your applications that is also key in in you know um trying to move to the next round of the application how about you mon um what do they need to show to progress to the next round for pavi naman um, I guess I'd like to build on what uh, Doreen already mentioned. So sometimes you focus, uh, well, most of the time, we really focus on the soft skills, especially for those who are just starting with their careers. But I guess half of the half of the winning the process is actually showing up. Like you really need to be diligent when it comes to the schedule and even the punctuality in the online um, interviews is already you know a behavior that we are measuring that we are observing so sometimes those small details that we tend to overlook also matter like showing up making sure that you are also prepared for the interview because sometimes even though you're at home you feel like um yeah it's okay if i wear my pajamas during the interview at least your top half man lang is, is uh, yeah. ready for the interview. Presentable, that's yeah. All, yeah, that's also something that we are looking at. I mean, we understand that, you know, you guys are at home or probably working from home while doing the interview. So it's fine. The environment, we don't judge naman. But of course, your preparedness would also tell us that you are really serious about this opportunity. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I read nga din, uh, um, of course, being prepared to answer the questions that the interviewer would be asking is very um, important. But at the same time, yung questions then that the graduates or the applicant will be asking is of utmost importance then, no, I believe. Because that also shows their interest in the company 
and that they are researching, you know, nag-check sila, okay, ano ba yung envi- work environment dito sa company na to? So maybe I'll ask na lang you then. So ayun, those things are very important then in terms of, you know, preparing for the interviews. Um, another overlook, ano then, aspect then, I believe. Ayun, sige. So, um, what do you think is the most important piece of advice that you give to students aspiring to work for um, in an organization within the engineering sector? So I know, of course, you have your own requirements for PAVI, may sarili kayo, for Aboytis, for JGC, may sarili din kayo. Um, but what do you think is the most important piece of advice in general for them to you know, succeed in the engineering session? But yeah. First of all, uh, before we proceed like that, I'd like to actually um, welcome our panelists here from EEI. So I think nagkaroon lang ng content connection problem. Hi, Erica. Good morning. Ayan, so yeah, uh, before we move on lang with the question, no, maybe you can introduce yourself as well and you know your role in EEI. Good morning, everyone. Um... Sorry for the late advice. So, in behalf of my boss, Sir Louis Galicia, our ADP of HRN, I'm Erica Jane Sawal, Recruitment Officer. I am the one who handling recruitment operation. Our main function is to provide manpower in our different project sites. AI is one of the known construction industry in our country. We are the one who construct different projects within the Philippines and also outside the Philippines, such as building infrastructure and electromechanical. For our outside project, we are tied up or in partnership with the ARCCPSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Hello. Ayan, ayan. Thank you very much, Erica. Um, so, siguro, ano lang, pahabo lang natin. Um, what is your organization looking for in an applicant? Ba? Um, for an applicant, it's depend on the position we are looking for. However, in general, we are looking for an applicant who has the for core value of EI. We are looking for the one who with integrity, excellence, fairness to stakeholder, and sustainability. I see, I see. All right. Sige, thank you very much, Erica. So, ayan. So, maybe we can go back na, no? To sa ating question. Again, what is the most important piece of advice that you give to students aspiring to work um, specifically in the engineering sector? So, this time, maybe we can start with Paula. Hi, Wilfred. Basically, um, for for students who are considering working in in an EPC or any engineering industry, um, first is that you must really learn the ropes of the company that you will be working on, and um, don't just confine or limit yourself in studying or perhaps doing the same thing, but uh, try to expand also your faculty of knowledge. In that way, um you can have a full grasp or a better understanding and you will also be able to appreciate the entire process of the company's perhaps op- operations okay as such uh this also opens to several doors of opportunities okay all right thank you for that paula um Doreen? so for us um well my advice for uh, students aspiring to work for a boy T's power is really to be open to learning new things um, and be open as well to learning from experts. Of course, in our industry, in the power industry, there are a lot of experts, right? So um, be open to learning from them and maximize learning opportunities as well that um, you can avail of and be ready to upskill or even reskill yourself. I mean, especially with emerging skills that we have right now to keep up with the times. All right. Thank you very much, Doreen. Um, Mon? Uh, I guess in addition to what Doreen and Paula said, uh, being a self-starter, not, I guess this applies not only for the, uh, you know, in the engineering sector, but uh, career in general, being a self-starter, uh, knowing when, uh, you know, there's or just having that drive to learn. Because sometimes we just because we graduated, we think we've finished and that our focus now is our careers. But actually, there's a lot of learning that still needs to be done within whatever organization you're in. So being a self-starter and knowing your resources and optimizing your resources so that you could utilize what you know to grow your career is, I think, a skill that all the young gener- younger generations like us should learn. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
All right. Um, how about you, Erica? Um, uh, student, I, I say self ano, advice lang for new students. Um, just equip yourself with the right knowledge, skills, and ability. And most especially, don't be afraid to learn and experience new things. And in construction, there are different pressure, most especially in the operation. But from those pressure, you will learn and develop yourself. That's it. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So I think the key then dito no is just be open to um other opportunities and you know um uh, be open to learning new skills. So you know, hindi porket engineer ka, hindi porket graduate ka ng engineering. Yung talagang ifo focus mo lang is you know mag AutoCAD or mag drawing or do engineering drawings. No, um in the workplace you will do um a very diverse um set of activities. You know, you will face clients. Um, you will talk to a lot of people, so those things, yung mga soft skills, um, kailangan i-develop din natin yun. Hindi pwede nakatutok lang tayo dun sa technical skills. Yung soft skills, that will actually help you um, accelerate your career no? um, in the industry. So I think that's um, parang yung key takeaway ko dun sa ating um, mga speakers. All right, so for students who land a job with you, what advice would you give? To you know, help them survive and thrive in their first year, and then siguro what shouldn't they do, naman? Kung bago ako, ano ba yung mga do's and don'ts? What's makapasok na sila kay Pavi, kay EEI, kay Aboytis, or kay JJC? So this time maybe we can start with Doreen. Great. So for students who land the job with us, as I mentioned, no, um, very, medyo pa ulit ulit din siya, but be open to learn new things yeah. and yeah. to add to that, take constructive criticism graciously. Um, so be open to feedback and don't be scared to ask questions because everyone in the organization is willing to help set you up for success. So um, yeah, ask questions um, and have that drive to learn about, um, about everything that you can learn. So learn as much as you can. And then also um, try to embody the culture. Uh, the culture and the values of the company. So for us in Aboytis Power example, um, we try to live by our culture, which we call Hola V. So that's high performance, owner's mindset, uh, learning and growth, a pot positive atmosphere, and of course, our values of uh, integrity, teamwork, innovation, responsibility, and service excellence. All right. Thanks, Doreen. Paula? Hi. Well, actually, um, here in JGC, should you become one of our cadet engineers, first, you must research about the company's industry before diving in, okay? Second is that, yeah, um, as what mentioned also by Doreen, don't be afraid to ask a lot of questions. In fact, we encourage employees to be more inquisitive or curious, Okay. Um, always communicate also with your colleagues, with your team leaders and managers to, you know, get a lot of insight and learnings from, from them as well. And um, aside, aside from that, uh, you may also want to or share your um, insights in which you think that will also help the, the uh, team. Also, be confident. Okay, don't be timid. Always speak up. Okay, remember, um, as what they say, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Paula. Um, Erica, uh, for those students who, who will land on our company, um, my advice is be coachable. Don't be afraid to learn. So communication is very important. You can ask other employee. They can help you at the same time. You can help them. All right. Thanks, Erica. Finally, Mon. I guess everyone mentioned really what we are looking for in um, new members of our team. But uh, one, I guess, based from experience, your first year in a new company is going to be rough it's going to be tough sometimes rough but you know you have to choose what you want to be stressed about and if it's this if that is the career then you should be ready to 
to um, extend yourself, spread yourself so that you will be able to meet the objectives that were set for you. Um, from an HR perspective, uh, I guess that's also one of the things that new employees should know that HR is actually there to guide you, to support you, to help you understand how every, you know, how things go around in that company. So aside from your managers, when you go in, learn that HR is actually your friend. So we want to onboard you. We want you to be assimilated and to be, you know, um, belong in that company. So don't be shy because HR is there to actually help you out in your careers and your day-to-day -day lives in that organization. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. So this time, naman, I think the common th um, theme is be open. No? So one is be open to um, learning new things, which we have mentioned na rin naman earlier. But another one is be open to communication. No? So don't be afraid to ask questions. Sometimes kasi tayo, pag fresh grad, pag graduate natin, feeling natin kapag, nagta um, kapag nagtanong tayo, that's a sign of weakness or that's a sign na kulang pa yung alam mo. Um, well, that's actually the case now. In the workplace, hindi naman talaga natin alam kagad lahat. Um, so we must be open to asking questions. We must be open to asking tips from, you know, yung mga seniors natin, how to do this, how to do that. Um, that's how we learn. Hindi tayo matututo lang on our own. You know, in school, siguro kaya. Ara lang tayong sarili natin. But in the workplace, we can't do that. So kailangan talagang very open tayo in communicating, asking questions, trying to learn more about your task, your job. So I think that's what really would help our um, applicants here or our graduates once makapasok na rin talaga sila um, in your respective companies. Um, so yeah, I think one question that is very relevant right now, and I'm sure this is also in the minds of a lot of people here, you know, with the pandemic and the disruption in the business, um, what is EEI, Aboitis, JGC, and Pavi doing to navigate these turbulent times, you know, um, making sure that the company stays afloat and competitive in these trying times, and also making sure that the employees are well taken care of. So, and an yung ginagawa natin, of course, with, with the pandemic and all. Maybe this time we can start with uh, Mon. Um, sige. So the pandemic actually was uh, a very, uh, last year was actually a very challenging time for us because the way we operate is we operate on the field because we supply water, we provide energy, we have internet services. So all of these are leading to the household. So all of these services would require our employees to actually be up and out and about. Um, last year, what we did was, um, while our main office were, was on a lockdown because it was based in Manila, the rest of our offices in the provinces were fully operational because we can't stop, because what we provide are essential to the communities. Kung walang tubig, walang kuryente, uh, you know, it, you really can't imagine what's going to happen in that particular area. So that's when, I guess this is where the culture of... Um, feeling that you belong in that organization comes in handy because everyone was actually willing to um, be out. You know, they volunteer. Ako na lang po mag duty because they know the importance of what we do and what we provide to the organization, to, to our communities as an organization. And um, that culture building is actually how I think we were, we kept afloat throughout the, the uh, trying time because uh, what we do every year is we actually go to our employees and we ask them, how's your year been? What can we do to make it better for you? So this is actually a small group discussion that we do annually and it helps us to understand that's Ansela. And in return, I think it built the loyalty. Um, that's why I think uh, even though it was difficult last year and, you know, a little this year, somehow we were still able to, to push through that. Um, as to how we take care of our employees, unfortunately, there were some employees who were affected by the virus. So they, they tested positive. And uh, depending on their needs, we try to meet them. Kasi iba -iba naman yan, depending on the need of the employee. But what we do, what we were able to implement all throughout was that um, if you were, if you need to go on quarantine, we make sure that you have paid leaves. And uh, whenever you go on quarantine because you were exposed or you tested positive, we made sure that yung leaves mo hindi mababawasan. So, but you're still paid because that's how we help you out. 
you have your HMO, we give out, we even give out vitamins and we even have um, health sessions to help employees understand what's the virus, how can, you know, how will this affect our families and all that. And not to mention, we've had our vaccination program as well. So um, these are all the things that we tried to, we implemented to try to help our employees be safe. Uh, and fortunately enough, no one really was af uh, affected severely by the virus. So we, right now, I guess, medyo mas safe for us and we are trying to go back to normal, but not yet, not so much. <laughs> I see, I see. But it's great, no, that you have those um initiatives then from the company. Um, how about for JGC, Paula? Hi. Yes. Um. Actually, here here in in JGC, as much as possible, we always try to adhere with the um government's safety protocols, uh, without also compromising the quality of work, and um. Um, it actually started last year. We have been exploring other options from our traditional practices to new approaches that are within also the safety standards. For, for an instance, um, we are instead of, well, in the recruitment process, instead of, you know, inviting people to uh, visit our, our office and conduct the the testing and interviews, of course, for safety protocols, we are digitalizing our recruitment processes. Um, aside from that, we are also practicing the work from home, uh, work from home rotation. And um, as months go by, no, um, basically our our government is somehow easing easing out the um, the 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 restrictions protocols or the restrictions yep. yeah so we actually abide with those no and um right now i can say that compared to to last year we are you know fully op operational all of our works here are 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 on full swing okay and um when it comes to to our employees well um as what Mon also mentioned that, uh, of course, it's actually very inevitable that uh, people or employees will really get infected with the COVID virus and all. But um, one thing's for sure, JGC always tries to reach out to, to our employees and aid or give them all the necessary assistance that we can offer. Okay. So that's it. All right. Thanks for that, Paula. How about you, Doreen? How about for Aboitis Power? Uh, for Whitey's power, it's it's kind of a combination as well of what uh, Paula and Mon uh, did in their own companies. No? So um, for our recruitment and onboarding process, we also shifted it uh, to a digital um, platform. Uh, we shifted it to virtual. No? Um, and then other than that, of course, in the Boyties Power, safety is our the safety of our employees is our top priority. So for our corporate employees and for employees who can work from home, uh, definitely they're expected to continue working from home. Um, actually, I think we're expected to do so until next year. Um, mm -hmm. And then since we're an essential business, uh, we keep the lights on. Of course, we have uh, different facilities across the Philippines. And um, since our power plants are also working 24-7, our team members there are on facility quarantine. Um, but uh, during their facility quarantine, of course, we try to um, provide their basic needs, food, shelter. And we also try to keep them engaged as much as we can. Um, so there are some business units who, um, so let's say there's a power plant um, where the team members there love to do uh, jamming sessions. So what one of our business units did, Tugtugan. Tugtugan, yes. Ah, okay, okay. So one of our business nice. units did was yeah. that um, they provided drums and guitars for the team members there to keep mm -hmm. them engaged and so that, you know, they have something to do after work. Um, and then we are, and I think we're, we're very lucky because um, our team members in the power plants and on facility quarantine, uh, they do understand you know, that they need to do that in order to keep the lights on. Um, and, and we're very grateful to them. Um, other than these, of course, we try to, um, uh, to put out a lot of engagement programs 
Um, and we also uh, have the vaccination program, which we have already rolled out. And But I think the most important program that we um, put out last year was CAPIT. CAPIT is our mental health program. So other than physical wellness, um, we really saw the need for a mental health program um, for our employees. So through this uh, program, we give them consultation, uh, free consultations um, if they need someone to talk to. And we also provide uh, learning sessions on uh, mental wellness. So I guess that's one of the, um, I guess, significant programs that uh, we've put out for our employees um, since last year. I see. Thanks for that, Doreen. Um, how about for EEI, Erica? For EEI Corporation, um, we set different protocols and our different projects. So it depends on the location of our project, um, depending on the LGU protocol. But for the EEI, we are the one who provide the RT-PCR, swab testing, and also we make sure that our employees are fully vaccinated. So um, merong times na yung isang employee namin ayaw magta-vaccine and then pag ganun, ina-approach namin. If ever na ayaw talaga, um, means nilalagay namin siya on a situ- in, a, um, in a project na allowed yung hindi vaccinated. Pero like for example, for those high-rise building we have the protocol of in-house and out-house um, situ- uh, parang in-in-house namin yung mga employee so, kung in-house ka, kailangan fully vaccinated ka. Pero pag out-house ka, um, yun yung mga araw-araw lumalabas, you, you will provide an antigen every time na magre-report ka sa project. So, ganun yung naging setup. Kasi, um, sa constra- yung meron kami mga employee na talagang gustong umuwi sila with their family. Eh. Kasi, we also concerned with their mental health. Kaya, inaalaw namin umuwi sila with their family. Pero, meron silang si- um protocol na kailangan sundin. And then, in, within the um, construction site, separate din sila nagtatrabaho. Nakaseparate si in-house and nakaseparate si out-house. That's it. Alright. Thank you very much, everyone. So, that's, uh, those are very great um, insights to know. No? So, um, yeah, I believe you know, of course, with the pandemic and all, uh, these are very troubling times. So good to know that um, we have your companies doing those things, you know, para to help with um, the employees' mental health, um, you know, to cope with, you know, minsan loneliness kasi especially pag sa planta ka, medyo malungkot eh, diba? So it's good na meron kayong mga ganyang activities, meron tayong, you know, for aboities, ayan, provide pa ng... Um, Doon? band kit or, or mga drums and guitar so that's great to know no all those initiatives um uh, makes us appreciate of course um yung mga ginagawa nat ng mga hr professionals natin to ensure that the employees are well taken care of so i guess for my last question so for our audience please if you have questions just raise um in the q a tab so i think may na a couple of questions answered by mon but um, let us answer that live as well. Um, yeah, if you have questions, feel free to type in sa Q&A na tab. Um, pwede naman anonymous kung medyo nahihiya tayo magtanong or, or to attach our name. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to you know get to know more about um, our employees here. No? So I don't think this opportunity, you know, yung talagang makausap natin yung mga employers um, comes around a lot. So please do maximize this chance. But yeah, I, I think as a final question, at least for me, um, in one sentence, why should students apply with your organization? So I think we can do the same order na lang then as we had the first one. Maybe Mon, you can start. Uh, I think the students should join Papi because like you, we, we are a young organization. So uh, we develop as, and you, deve- you, de- you develop along with us. So that in itself, I guess, is a very good career opportunity already. All right. Kumbaga, sabay na nag-grow yung employee and yung company. That's great to know. Um, how about you, Doreen? So for us, why you should apply to Aboytees Power. So Aboytees Group has been um, in the business for over 100 years already. And this, um, of course, it's a, it's a testament to um to what we do as an organization. So as 
also, other than that, as a leading power generation company and, as I've mentioned, the largest producer and operator of renewable energy in the Philippines, we're a people-centric organization um, that provides limitless opportunities, not just professionally, but also personally. And we do purposeful work in a culture-focused environment where um, working hard and playing hard is also recognized. So there. All right. Work hard, play hard. All right. Thanks, Doreen. How about you, Paula? How about well, for um, JGC? Yeah. For, for uh, JGC, well, um, we all know that engineering or construction sectors are very lucrative vis-a-vis -vis other industries. Um, however, JGC creates value through engineering. Um, we also have this Japanese expertise and we incorporate new technologies now. However, um, there's just one thing that that is for sure. If ever you will you will join JGC, you will become globally competitive. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Paula. Um, Erica for EEI. So for EEI, in EEI it is important for us to develop our employees. We give a chance to every employee who are willing or want to learn. For those engineers, we are conducting different training program. We're in, in here, our trainers are those who are already known in the field. So um, they will be guided by seniors um, in the company. They, um, they train them. That's it. All right. Thank you very much, Erica. So yeah, um, for the questions, yeah, I would like just to remind everyone that if, if you want to know more about EEI, Aboitis Power, JGC, and Pavi, you can check out their profile at Prosper Philippines. So I've posted the link in the chat room. Um, you can visit their profiles there. Um, but yeah, maybe we can look at some of the questions that we have here. Um, I think there are mga sinagot na questions, Simon. No? So one question is, what are examples of good questions to ask um, an engineering company during or after an interview? So Mon, maybe you can start since you've already answered it. Naman. I think I mentioned there too. First is you want to you would want to ask about the work environment and culture because it would help you understand if that's in line with your personal values and probably principles as well. And next, uh, I suggest you ask about how does an engineering career develop in that organization because it would help you understand what your opportunities are within that company. All right. Um, anything to add, Doreen, Paula, or Erica? Hi. For me, um, candidates can can actually ask what what will be their uh career path in 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 the company that they are applying with, so that they they can also gauge what are the what what are the expectations, what should they do what will happen to them perhaps five to 10 years from now. So yeah, ask for the for what will be your career path in the company. Yeah, thanks, Paula. I think uh, very much applicable then, you know, not only in an engineering company, but also in others as well. You know, trying to gauge, okay, sige, pag nag-apply ako sa inyo, ano ba mangyayari sa akin? Ano ba yung career na naghihintay sa akin? So that's a great question to ask then. It, shows that you're actually looking forward into the future and you know looking towards a better career within the company. Doreen? Yeah, if I may add as well um, to what Amon and Paula has mentioned, um, I think you can also try to ask about the leaders, um, you know, uh, who your mentors will be. Try to get to know them and, and how they've started their career. Um, you can also, you're also free to ask about the company's long-term business strategy. Um, so that you know, diba, parang, um, what's in it for you um, in, in the company. And of course, uh, as was um, mentioned by Mon, naman, no, the culture um, and the values. No? So um, you can ask how the team members are living the values so that you can check if you know, this aligns to your personal values as well. All right. Thanks, Doreen. Um, Erica? Um, Ms. Ms. Lorene is right, um, you should ask what is the culture of the company. Because sometimes more of the newly grad, when they come to the construction industry, the reason nila 
kaya sila hindi nakakatagal is because of the culture. So I think um, is, as a new student or applicant, you should ask what is the culture of the company para ma-ready mo din sarili mo. Yeah, definitely. So um, I, I also want to highlight that. I think very important no, na tignan mo din yung sarili mo. Um, fit ka ba in terms of culture, in terms of work environment do sa company na ina-applyan mo no. So hindi ka pwedeng hindi ka dapat nag apply lang because of the name, you know. Ah, etong company na to, um malaking company to. They are a global company, they're operating worldwide. So apply ako dito. Um what's key is that you know that you will fit in the company culture no. So um some culture medyo lax, medyo relax, medyo you know Medyo young y- yung um, environment. Pero some naman talagang puro seniors na, puro, well, not senior citizens, no? puro um, middle management, middle level na, middle of their career. So, kumbaga, uh, medyo dikdika na. So, it's important that you yourself know um, kung magfi-fit ka dun sa organization. Kasi otherwise, you will experience culture shock and hindi ka din tatagal. Sayang lang din yung oras that you could have spent in you know a, a company that um mas babagay doon sa hinahanap mo. Siguro for the other questions pala maybe I'll ask two of you na lang din um for each questions to you know save time kasi I think may madami tayong questions na pumapasok na rin. Um I am an engineering student who failed subjects before but I can say I'm confident with my extracurricular skills and people skills. Ayun, so yung question niya is how will my academic performance affect my chances of getting employed? Um, maybe we can ask um, Doreen and Paula for this. So basically, yeah, in terms of grades, he, he or she didn't do that well. Pero maganda yung um, background niya in terms of extracurricular and people skills. So what can he or she do to make up for his substandard academic performance? Yeah, I, I think I can start, <laughs> Paula, to focus yep. with you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Go ahead. So yeah. I, I think to compensate for the um for the academic performance, you can try to uh, check out you know learning opportunities online. N- you know now um in in our, in our in the digital world, parang there are a lot of uh, learning sessions, webinars that you can attend. And other than that, as we've um as we've uh, mentioned a while ago, no um. Of course, it's important to to look at your soft skills, how you communicate, diba? how you um how you work under pressure and and the resilience. So um so as you mentioned, no, he failed subjects before. He or she failed subjects yeah. before. And how did they siguro, prosper um through through this challenge in their life? So I think you know um those are things that we can definitely look at. And of course, if you're someone who's resilient enough, um, uh, and if you know, um, uh, you know, areas that you need to improve on, you're, you're aware of that, then definitely that could um, boost no, your, uh, your chances of getting employed in, in our companies. All right, Paula. All right. Um, okay. Basically, having, you know, having an outstanding academic background or scholastic records is really a uh, plus points. But um, let's not forget, leaders don't reach their positions on just having good grades. But um, basically, being able to learn the business, learn diff- different processes, and not to mention, of course, having the right attitude, okay? Having the right values can actually pave way to you on um, becoming a successful employee. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, another question that we have is, um, what do you think are the red flags or unacceptable traits an applicant shouldn't have? Um, Mon? I mentioned this earlier. Uh, you know, half of the process is actually showing up. 
So if, for example, we set a schedule, we agreed on a schedule, and then all of a sudden that applicant doesn't show up for the virtual interview, but has to reschedule later on, that's already a, a red flag for us. Unless, of course, it's for valid reasons, like you have an emergency to attend to. But normally, that's something that would indicate a uh, lack of interest or you know a seriousness to pursue that particular opening. All right. Um, Erica? Um, Ms. Mon is right. Time is very important, especially in construction. Um, uh, so during the interview, you must give uh, importance to the time. If we set this time, you must attend at the right time. All right. Thank you very much. So yeah, uh, I guess... Um, sabi nga nila, no, availability is the best ability. But yeah, it, when you commit to A-time, um, it's very important that you stick to that commitment. Kasi if nag apply ka pa lang and you keep on rescheduling and then a late kasi interview and then you don't look you know, um, presentable enough, um, I think that's a big red flag na, na you, know, you may be not that serious in your application. So that's a uh, um, parang key... Um, stuff then that you you should take note no na kailangan talaga uh, very presentable uh, very professional ka in your approach in dealing with you know our hr professionals here um on another question that we have do you think it is a disadvantage when the student applying for a job does not have a joint officership in any organization so for example member lang siya ng organization hindi siya leader we mentioned this a lot earlier na you know yung grades um Grades are just numbers. You know what's important are yung leadership skills, yung soft skills, and so on. But what if, ayan, opposite naman, um, member siya ng organization but not really on the leadership level. Um, do you think that's a disadvantage? Um, maybe we can have um, Paula and Mon to answer this. Yeah. Um. Actually, me. Well, let's not let's not go too far. <laughs> In my case, I was I was I was not that you know um, I didn't had a uh, leadership experience back on my college days. But um, basically, everything can be learned. Okay. Um, also, as as what they uh, mentioned or keeps on, as what people keeps on saying, everything can can be learned. Learning is a continuous process. If you really want to um, become a, a good leader someday, then you you can actually learn or study everything. Um, also, try to obtain or get all the the um, the right practices that that perhaps your uh, mentor does, and try to try to incorporate it or try to embody it and implement it. Uh, no, so in that way you can become future leaders someday. Okay, so it's not actually necessary for you to have a background on on becoming leader no no but uh definitely it 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 can be learned through through experience uh through experiences all right thanks for that mon i'd like to echo what paula mentioned because uh, most most organizations if not all have their leadership development programs so depending on the potential that you will be able to manifest during employment, I think that's something that we could develop internally. And like Paula, I didn't have any organizations in college. I didn't even join organizations when I was in the university. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that you will be able to develop through exposure, through your own study as well, and then, of course, through application in the opportunities that you will be presented in your job. All right. Thanks for that. So I think yung key takeaway natin dito ano, is everything can be worked on. You know, if, you know, nag-join ka ng organization, if naging leader ka, then that's good. But if not, that's something that we can work on. If um, hindi masyado maganda yung grades mo, you know, um, you struggled in academics during your co during college days where you were able to join, um, you know, organizations, work on your extracurricular skills, um, Pagdating sa workplace, that's also something that we can work on. So, you know, um, what's important is you're open to learning, you know. Alam mo kung anong kulang mo, and then you're open to, um, you know, amplifying or, or you know, ano ba, paano matawag doon? Parang remedyohan kung, kung ano yung mga pagkukulang mo. 
All right. So another question here, which I think I can ask all of you na lang is, which engineering field do each company prioritize for employment? So additionally, parang you have here, industry, do industrial engineers fit in your companies and any mga qualifications needed knowing that walang board exam there? So I think we can start with Erica. So for the field of engineering, I think um, yung four basic, eh, which is um, mechanical, um, civil, electrical, ay three basic actually, yung tatlong yun, lahat yun, um, welcome in EI. For the industrial engineer, usually, um, nire-refer namin sila for our safety engineer program. Doon sila na, doon namin sila nire-recommend. Pero doon sa tatlo, basically, civil engineer, mechanical engineer, and electrical. Because EI is involved with different, ano nga, which ha, we have the building, the electromechanical, and also the infrastructure. So, nagagamit namin yung tatlong uh, engineering field na yun. I see. How about for Aboitis Power, Doreen? Yeah, um, actually, it's the same with, with Erica. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for the top three, electrical, mechanical, and civil. But we also have opportunities for, say, geodetic engineers, um, uh, electronics engineers. And for industrial engineers, actually, they're more in our corporate office. Um, so we usually employ industrial engineers for our business process and quality management teams, for our innovation and change management team, um, and of, uh, as well in, as in our supply chain management. So there. All right. Um, Paola. Okay. Um, here in JGC, basically we do have a lot of um opportunities for different disciplines, be it in the, in the civil engineering side, in the electrical, mechanical, but specifically for the industrial engineering graduates, you guys can actually land a job here under the procurement department and our cost department. All right. Thanks, Paula. Mon? Uh, it's the same for the IE. What we normally we appoint them in operational support roles, so tech serve, uh, supply chain, as uh, Doreen mentioned. Uh, but normally, in terms of the operations, we would require for mechanical, ECE, EE. So, ito yung mga engineers that we really we consider frontliners in terms of the operations. All right. Thank you very much. So I guess we can ask one last question na lang din. No? So just to ano lang din, um, moving forward, so yan, um, we won't have EEI to present kasi wala yung speaker nila. So we'll just have a boitis to present later. And then afterwards, mayroon din silang five minutes no Q&A. So for questions specifically for a boitis power, we can reserve that during the end of the session. So for now, I think we can pick on one last question. Um, yeah, I think... This is a good finale. What are the stages of your company's recruitment process? And how long do you usually process applications? And yun, meron siyang kadugtong, what makes your recruitment process stand out? So ayan, may um, pa stand out. What makes your recruitment process different or you know, um, unique? So I guess we can start with Paula this time. Okay, um, actually, our recruitment process here is very, very typical. Um, first is that we, we started with um, sourcing, sourcing or screening potential candidates. And then after that, we endorse them for the testing stage. Okay. Yep. Should the applicants pass on the testing stage, we... we um, conduct the initial interview, the candidates and the HR people. And then after that, we endorse them for a second interview. Um, the interview um, involves the candidates and the department managers. So basically, it is a panel interview. And then after that, um, or for, for the final interview, we endorse them to our executives. Okay, so um, as you can observe, applicants will really go all the way up to our executive level. No? And um, as what I uh, keep on mentioning, 
in terms of our screening from from sourcing up to the executive interview, we really do it tediously because you guys will be our future successors here. But what makes our recruitment process stand out? Basically, I, 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 I guess the experience of meeting people on the executive level, because um, in this way, we are already practicing or we are already developing uh, people or future employees here to, you know, face also potential clients or potential um, customers, be it, uh, be it locally or clients outside of the Philippines. So in a way, this is a prep, prep, preparatory already for, the, for, for, for our employees to meet different types of people up to the executive level. All right. Thanks, Paula. Mon? It's pretty much the same with Paula because we involve also the senior management in our recruitment process. Sometimes for efficiency or depending on the urgency of the recruitment, we do the panel interview immediately. So at the onset, it would be HR the, and then the line manager and the senior manager all in one Zoom interview room and we will do the interview together. Um, we also have an online exam. I guess that's one thing that we innovated because of the pandemic because we can't administrate face-to-face. -face. Um, and I think that in general, I think recruitment process is pretty standard other than the experience of knowing who our senior managers are. Um, I guess you know, all of the exciting stuff already happens once we, once the applicant gets in. All right. Thank you very much. How about for Aboitis Power Dream? Yeah, so actually it's also the typical recruitment process that Paula and Mon mentioned. Um, so we start with, uh, but for us in Aboitis Power, we start with an initial interview um, and then we do the assessments and then we uh, endorse for um, at most two Hiring managers, uh, hiring manager interviews. No, um, I think what makes our recruitment process stand out is um, really, um, I think that the candidate experience that we try to um, we try to uh, to prioritize. Um, so I, I've gotten a lot of you know feedback from candidates that you know we make them feel at ease uh, during the interview. Um, uh, which is very important as well. And I think um, before they start, uh, since part, well, after they accept the offer, um, I think what also makes our process stand out is more on the pre-boarding uh, pre stage. So uh, we have a digital onboarding platform that starts um, once they accept the offer. And um, at, at that stage, they already get a view of the company, what our culture is. They already get a lot of info about the company so that, you know, um, they can they can build on the anticipation before they start with the Whitey's Power. All right. Thank you very much, Doreen. How about for EEI, Erica? Um, for our uh, recruitment process, same with them. Um, we do conduct initial interview and then assessment. Um, the difference with DEI is we have a two-way process. If you are applying for a position involving in the operation, we can this is an on-hand um, on um, interview or examination. So, pinapapunta namin yung applicant sa main office namin. We're in, doon sila trade test ng, hindi siya paper and pen, but yung mismong equipment ang gagalawin nila. Pero for the support, so yun yung mga engineers involving in design, um, most especially sa office base lang sila, we conduct the virtual interview. So they undergo interview with managers para to ask different questions related with the position. All right. Okay. All right. 